The crucial fourth test match began in Sydney in sultry, overcast weather with just a hint of thunderstorms around, possibly later in the afternoon on the first day. Ian Chappell, the Australian captain, won the toss. The fourth time he'd done that in the series, a real bonus for Australia on a pitch that looked as though it would be all in favour of batting. The 12th men, Chris Old for England, Terry Jenner for Australia, and Greg Chappell playing, although under something of a fitness cloud with a recurrence of that virus ailment that almost laid him low before the first test match in Brisbane. The pitch, well, it was very heavily grassed the afternoon before the test. When the captains went out to toss, a lot of that grass had gone. It was still hard, but it looked as though there'd be quite a bit of life in the first session. The England opening bowlers, Bob Willis and Jeff Arnold, and here's Jeff Arnold now, bowling to Rick McCosker, McCosker playing in his first test match for Australia. Short of Bob Willis. Oh. That's a really good delivery from Arnold. That's beautifully bowled. Lovely piece of bowling. It's a fine shot. It's a good look at McCosker. Not for 49. Willis. Oh, nice shot from McCosker. Cosca 31, Australia none for 55. Another pull shot. You won't oh, get to it. Yes. Red part 17 not out. McCosca 37 not out. There are eight sundries, no wicket for 62 from 17 overs. Oh, shot. It will beat the play. It will beat it. Uh, Edward into the fence. Australia north for 71. Redpath 18. McCosker 45. And the slow handcuffs have started for Ian Redpath from the hill, where they're singing already. We want Walters. North for 71. Beautifully timed stroke, and it's McCosker's 50. And a very good innings indeed from. This young New South Wales player, 28 years of age, playing in his first test match and a half century, and a good one too. He was put down by John Edridge or Bob Willis, and Alan Knott just got his fingertips to another possible chance of Tony Gregg. And what a great moment for Rick McCosker. He's out. Bowled hit, him. Hit wicket, I feel. Just brushed it with his pad. And that was and Freddie Titmus has taken the first wicket. Bad luck for Redpath, but just what England needed is a tonic. One for 96. Great shot. He's got that away beautifully over square leg. Titmus to the Australian skipper. Who stands away and hammers past point. The ground a little slow from overnight rain will pull it up. Underwood. Oh, he's hit that with a heavy bat. It'll make the fence. Moves to 70. Chapel driving. Capacity crowd, it's a wonderful day now. The sun is out, and we see some blue sky and a light northerly wind blowing. Perfect for run making. <laughs> now, yes, he's gone. Tony Gregg looks to the heavens. Well, by Tony Gregg, twice in the previous over he had blown McCosker outside the off stump, and that was not a Great cricket shot, but still, what can you ask for out of making 79 in his first test match on his home ground in front of a capacity crowd and gets a tremendous ovation from the Sydney public. And I'm sure all the viewers at home have seen a cricketer of the future. Rick McCosker caught not bowl Greg for 79. Two for 142, and that was a wicket of England badly. And listen to that crowd. 
It's a fantastic ovation. Oh, beautifully timed shot. None for 21, and uh, Australia two for 150. Four more. Yes. Great stroke. The pressure really being piled on England now. And that is out. Yes, he's gone. A good delivery. Ian Chappell, foot not, bold Arnold for 53. Nobody down there. Edwards is chasing. It'll be close. And the ball will win the race. Jeff Arnold to Greg Chappell. And it's just over the top. One of the Willis or a Greg, and he might have pulled that down. The end result of four. This is the first time John Edwards, captain of England, uh, in a test match, certainly, uh, John Snow, is that would be correct, top. would it? Mm. Oh, dear. Edwards decided he's going to get into the act. David Lloyd took uh, instant evasive action. That completed uh, the over from Titmus. 236 for three. Greg Chappell has the strike, he's 48. He is more than 48 now, he's 49, he's coming back. To Fred Titmus arm, certainly. There's the half century. A sedate 50. A fine effort from Ann, who this morning was uh, very doubtful to play for Australia because of a virus and a rash he has on his chest, neck. Titmus to Ross Edwards. Oh, oh, he's cutting very, very fine. So fine it just went past the arm of um, Alan Knott. And it's four runs. Tony Gregg. to Ross Edwards. Ooh, he's played it on. Yes. He's played it on. Tony Gregg again, and that was Ross Edwards being over careful there. He tried to push that ball through the goey area. It cut back on him slightly, and that was a valuable wicket for England, which will expose Doug Walters to the new ball in the morning. For England, everything this morning depended on the second new ball, with the prime need to break the Greg Chappell-Walters partnership and then to make certain the Australian tail enders were quickly removed. In fact, the bowlers had a quick success. And here we see Jeff Arnold bowling the second over of the day from the Paddington end. The batsman is Doug Waters. Mm -hmm. Arnold. Oh, striking on the... He's given him out. Walters out. W.W. Arnold for one. In fact, do you think the slip field is a little thinly populated for them? Um... They're encouraging Greg, I suppose, to play the shot. Oh, sweet shot. Beautifully played. Sydney Cricket Ground turf, still a little slow. Overnight rain. It's Willis again. Mars has got hold of this. A ball that went straight on and straight on past mid-off. They should run for. They will quite comfortably. Derek Underwood had a long chase. Takes Mars to six and arouse the crowd to a little enthusiasm. Australia five for two, double six. Superb shot. Greg took some of the place over, but that ball's still going to rocket into the fence below us here. And one almost equally as good, although Dennis Amos is going to get closer to it without ever having a real chance of cutting off the boundary. Oh. Safe and four. Inside edge. Five for 305. Oh, oh dear me. Right over and around it. 
It's always a nice stump to see for anybody, that Doug. It's caught. Splendidly caught by Tony Gregg. Jeff Arnold applauding the catch. Completion of this over. The team of Richie Benno. Nice shot from Walker. Short backswing. He's hammering it away for... He won't reach the fence. Three runs. Takes Walker to ten. Just particularly on the elbow, I should think. A crowd of booing as we see on video disc, but uh, Dennis, we moved into that. You see, he's pulled away and. Uh, To make a cruel comment, he's made one mistake, he's hit the wrong elbow. <laughs> that was one that has caused Dennis Lilly to throw a fierce glance down the pitch. As we see it on replay again, it was short. And uh, we see John Edridge, who obviously has got to bat, saying now, as that replay as we see there, keep them up and Tony Griggs pointing to the foot marks where he says that um, he slipped. Bowling and good bowling from Jeff Arnold. Look out, it's on again. It's on again. It's now eight for 332. Lilly was out for eight. Walker for 14. And the new batsman coming out is Mallet. That uh, vacant gap between second slip and point. No man in catching position there. That is exactly the spot. I don't know how they can do this. It would drive me crazy if I were out there bowling and that ball kept on flying through the slip cordon. No, Richie, at uh, standing captaincy by John Edwidge, it's so easy to be critical from outside the fence, but Walker in particular is vulnerable on the off stump. And he persists in having uh, only two slips. On that occasion, the ball went knee high straight through the gully position. I'm not quite sure how they expect to get Walker out of it, and they have many in catching position. That's the strange uh, position that they're in at the moment. The three runs there, at least. It might just make the boundary before Derek Underwood can get to it, and it does. It's a better-looking stroke, and Amos will be hard put to cut that off. Just a yard inside the fence, and it's a long throw for a man with a bad arm. Alan Knott has got it. And it's it's it out. Oh, dear, that was very close. It's gone for possible overthrows. The Englishman looked very disconsolate at that. It was good cricket from Notty, who gathered in Amos's throw on the bounce, threw down the stumps at the bowler's end. I've seen some <laughs> some shots in the time, but that would go down as one of the strangest. <laughs> Not too sure what he tried to do there. Oh, Ashley, what are you doing? What are you doing? That ball was that pace, it was cream puff pace. And uh, Ashley Mallet's played it by throwing the bat at the ball. <laughs> yeah, that's an incredible shot. They've stuck it out, and Max particularly has done very well. Now has 30 on the board. Ashley Mallet has moved on to 19. The score, 8 for 368. No, he's gone. 
Speak to you soon. Yes, they don't come much easier than that, do they? Greg now, bowling to Mallet. Conditions would be a lot better today out in the field than they were yesterday, John. A lot better to bowl in, yes. Yesterday is... Well, there was a bit of a surprise with that sunshine. Everybody thought it was going to be cloudy all the time. Oh! <laughs> That'll be four, but it um, couldn't have been that far from uh, Bob Willis's hands. Still, we see that there's another... Still no third slip in there, you know, here. That's... Oh, well... There again, uh, John. It's four runs. He's gone. Now it's out. LBW to Greg for 31, and Australia is all out for 405 as we watch the video this replay. Yes. Not much doubt about that. Well, Ian Chappell must have been highly delighted at that uh, 405 first innings performance, but I really felt that uh, England contributed a lot to their own problems. John Edridge found it just so difficult to set men in those close catching positions to take advantage of the edge strokes. The Australians got away with it, and for the third time in this series, the tail enders frustrated England. Well, then 42,000 people at the ground, seated and on the hill, settled back to watch what was certain to be a very fast and very furious performance from Jeff Thompson and Dennis Lilly. Thompson. Oh! Four byes. Roaring, That's... rearing bouncer. Four byes. Thompson. Oh! Beautiful ball. Superb delivery. Thompson from this relaxed run. Beautiful action. Oh, spray. Four more. Four more. Lily. Oh, good ball. Beautiful flyer. Perfectly positioned. England none for 14. Lloyd the striker on one. Amos three. Uh, ten sundries. Lily. Oh, oh, what a dear. magnificent delivery, Doug. Superb. Superb. How Beautiful. did that miss the stumps? Yes. It was a great delivery from Lily. And a fine stroke. It'll be at least three. Koska, the man chasing it. Amos might look for four. And will get it. That's four runs. Mallet won't catch that. A good stroke by David Lloyd. It went in the air through the point region, but there was no fieldsman there, just a one-man patrolling the offside. And that's a very good start for England. 35 without loss with Lloyd 14 and Amos 11. Oh, what a marvellous catch. What a great catch by Ashley Mallard. He's taken some good ones in this series. But nothing better or more valuable than that. Dennis Amos brilliantly caught off this first bowling change. Max Walker coming on. And Amos caught by Mallet. As you see on the video here, diving away to his left. A splendid catch. One of the best we've seen in the series. Amos out for 12. And England 36 for 1. Oh, he's caught. What a great breakthrough for Australia. Lloyd is out. Caught Thompson. Here's the replay. 
Well, it's a good bit of bowling on Dennis's part and also a good bit of field placing because we, we saw him ask uh, Ian Chappell to move Jeff Thompson up into that position just before T. Great breakthrough for Australia. Lloyd out, caught Thompson, bowl Lilly for 19. England lose their second wicket at 46. And the New England captain, John Edrich, making his way to the crease. There you see part of this bevy of slip fielders on both sides of the wicket. Two leg slips, four slips in the gully. Well, they'll pick the gap. And it will beat Thompson into the fence, and that's four more to Cowdery. Well, that's four runs. That's four runs, Colin Cowdery. Well struck. Thompson again. From the round weekend. Ball into Cowdery. Oh. Not a good shot from Cowdery. Got four runs from it, though. He's gone. Cowdery's out. Rick McCosker accepting the catch. Here it is again. Oh, he hit him in the head. Straight in the head. It's bounced across on the offside. McCosker it got him in the forehead, I think. A firm stroke from John Edrich. He was a bit fortunate not to be caught. That ball flew to Mallet in the gully and only bounced some two metres in front of Mallet. But McCosker's the worry at the moment, of course, as we see him on the screen. It had to happen at some stage that one of these close in fields would either close in on the onside at uh, Short Ford Square or on the offside would be hit. Here's the replay of it now. Edwards got it in the meat of the bat. Walker coming around the wicket. It was quite a well hit stroke. Picked it up off his pads and it bounces away there back past Edridge as McCosker goes down onto the ground. The sitting plum square on it was a forceful shot by John Edridge and uh, as you say, Rich, it had to happen. England at 106 for three at the start of play on the third day of the third test match still needed 100 runs to avoid the follow-on and much depended on the partnership between Keith Fletcher and John Edridge, the overnight not-out batsman. Ian Chappell had his own problems. He had Ashley Mallett out of action with this bruised hand sustained in the bumper incident the day before. And although his fast bowlers were refreshed, this was likely to cause him problems as the day went on. Jeff Thompson bowled the first over of this third day to John Edrich. And chance and caught, dropped. Had it almost long enough to be a chance. That's Ian Chappell. And a chance and caught. Caught by Redpath. Fletcher, Fort Redpath, Bowl Walker, 24. Edwidge not out, 13. England, 4 for 108. And through the field, it's going wide of gully down towards the boundary. A chase for Walters. And that's slowing up, but I think it'll go into the fence for four. And Edwidge gets a run. In fact, he could get four runs. It's going out towards the boundary. It will be four. Yes, into the fence it goes. And there it is, it's going up wide of Redpath. Redpath not quite getting, yes he does. Well stopped. Coming back for two. And caught by Greg Chappell. Once again, Greg Chappell has taken a catch for Australia. Greg caught Greg Chappell. Bowl Thompson for nine. Thompson has two for 29. The score, 5 to 123. So a big blow to England with the dismissal of the, one of their best, probably their best batsman in the form of Tony Gregg. And through the field, that's going down past Greg Chappell, a chase for Ian Chappell down to the boundary. I think the ball will beat them all. Thompson's flying round from fine leg. Walker, bowling to Knott. Oh, and in the air through the gully safely. Walters is chasing it as uh, 
It goes into the boundary for four. And England, five for 152. The 152 runs came up in 248 minutes. There's Walker. He's ready again to bowl to Edridge. There's a lovely stroke through the covers. That'll be four. Edridge on 45. Walter's bowling. Good stroke, there's no one down at third man. That will be four runs. And Edrich moving on to 49. And Ian Chappell bowling to him. And there's the 50. One run down to square leg. England five for 176. It's been a very fine innings by Edrich. Upish behind point, uh, behind uh, square leg, over the top of Mallet, into the fence for four. Walters now to Edridge. And he's out. Caught leg glancing, Walters. The courageous innings from John Edridge. The man who's shown his own side how to apply himself. And runs here, good looking shot by Not that could be four. It's going out to the outfield, I think it'll just reach the fence and Yes, into the fence it goes. Good effort by Nutt. Along the ground all the way. And that time it's over the top. <clears throat> and races into the fence for four more. And a good shot from Tipness down through the mid-off area. A long chase for Jenner. He'll get to this. They'll take three, a comfortable three. Tipness goes on to four. Not his 40, that's the 200 up for England, six for 200. And that's the follow on saved. It's going down towards the boundary. Four runs over the top of the slips again, and Tipness on to 10. And England does not have to follow on, so that's a milestone pass by England's batsman. Tipness 10, not 43, six for 209. And a French cat, a very lucky one for Knott. They've got one, and, and that's his 50. Not his third 50 of the series, a very fine batting effort. Not his 50. Titmus 18, 6 for 224. And a fine looking shot. That's a good shot from Knott. I think that could be four. It's going out towards the boundary. Lily's chasing up. He won't get to it. And four more to Knott. Great looking shot on the first bounce. And that's the 50 partnership. Coming up in pretty fast time. They've only been playing now for 37 minutes since lunch and about a few minutes before that, 40 minutes. 40 minutes for 50 runs and the most valuable batting of the whole English innings. He's out. Yes, Walters has taken the wicket again. Titmus, Court Marsh, Paul Walters for 22. Not is not out, 62, 7 for 240, Walters 2 for 26. First ball with a new ball. And not straight through the covers, four runs. Well, that's taken some of the shine off straight away, it's going out to the boundary, Jenna won't get to it, and into the fence it goes. And back past the ball, a great shot. He really hit into that one. Straight back past the bowler, and that's one way to humiliate a fast bowler. Hit him straight back to the fence. Good shot from Underwood. That's going right down to the boundary. That should be four. And once again, the Australian pace man has been driven back past himself. They really scored well off the new ball. Seven for 260. Not is 78. And more, yes, down to the third man into the fence for four. Well, that time he's connected. Out towards the boundary it comes. I think that should be four. Yes, I think uh, Walker can give that one up. He wasn't behind the line, but the bat was. Well, England have got three hours to go, and uh, they're batting really well. This late recovery is, is as good, if not better, than Australia's. In fact, it's very close to it. And over the top of slips. 
Down to the fence it goes. It mightn't be four. Will it be? Yes, it is four. So in one hour's play since lunch, England have scored 92 runs. Not and Thompson to Bolton not. Clean ball. Well, it's the end of a great innings. Well, very well, Lily. Perhaps has deserved better figures. surely now has got to be straight at the stumps because uh, Willis should not be able to handle his speed. I don't think that was intended. I think the uh, full toss was not intended at all. It very nearly bowled uh, Willis in fact. Willis wandered up the crease, dropped his bat, and you probably noticed also that Marsh threw the ball at the stumps and hit them with uh, Willis out of his ground, but I don't think an appeal was made. So Lily again. Thompson, I should say. <laughs> Comprehensively bowled, leg stump out of the ground. Willis bowled Thompson to... Thompson to bowl to him. short one wasn't all that short again I think we'll possibly give Thompson the benefit of the doubt on that occasion and that's the end of the innings Underwood out caught by Walker at mid off the bowling of Lilly for 27 Arnold not out three, England all out for 295. For the Australians, Rick McCosker was unable to open the innings. He's still suffering the after effects of that nasty blow sustained from that uh, John Edridge hit to leg yesterday. And Ian Chappell, the captain, decided to come out with Ian Redpath. We join play now in the fifth over of the Australian second innings. Bob Willis is the bowler and he's bowling to Ian Chappell. And his chance, he could be out. Let's see what happens here. There's an appeal that's on the ground. There's Lloyd. They're going to ask the two umpires are going to confer here. Now, there's a question of whether this was a chance or out or not. He's out. Yes, Ian Chappell's out. Caught by Lloyd. Ian Chappell caught Lloyd. Bowl Willis for five. Australia 1 for 15. Here's the action replay. This certainly is a sensation. Let's see if we can pick up this uh, catch. Willis bowling to Chapel. Side, I'd say four runs all the way. There's a man coming around the boundary. Out the ball stopping, but still getting to the fence. And a beautiful strike from Chapel. He really unwound that time, and that's out to the fence for four. And a very good shot by Chapel. Will he come back for his second? That's his 50. Australia won for 83. Chapel's 50 came up in the good time of 80 minutes. And there were five fours in that innings. He played some lovely strokes. 123 for one, Australia at the start of the fourth day. 233 ahead. And Greg Chapel and Ian Redpath well in command when play had concluded on Monday. Weather conditions were good, but there was a hint of thunderstorms later in the day. And Australia certainly would want to set England a target of round about the 400 mark. 
England, for their part, would simply try and delay that declaration as long as possible with as many defensive ploys as they could manage. The pitch, well, that was perfect. And Bob Willis is the man who bowls the third over of the day, and he's bowling to Ian Redpath. There's a good stroke. Titmus, that third man. Redpath gets two and also his half century. He's 51. The Australian total now one for 127. Oh. Off the edge, four runs. Willis still bowling at the northern end, bowling to Greg Chapel. Lovely stroke. That won't be stopped. Australia, one for 158. And that's straight down the ground. That should be four. So Greg Chapel to 89, and the total to 162. And beautiful shot from Greg Chappell. This could be his 100. They might get three here. It's a chase down for Titmus. They've taken two, and they come back for three. There's the 100 to Greg Chappell. And he's not caught. It's going down past the slip fieldsman. That was a very streaky shot from Redpath, but he gets four for it. And walking away from his stumps to crack that hard through point. It's going out towards the boundary. Amos may just get to it. It's going to be close, but the ball wins. Quarter Greg Chapel. Greg Chapel to 107. Redpath 75. Australia, one for 190, a lead now of exactly 300, and Greg Chappell becomes the first player in Australia to score 1,000 runs this season. When his score reached 106, he passed the 1,000, and he's done that in 16 innings. And he hit that out towards the boundary. It's hard and high, and that's going out to the member stand area for four. Willis, the only wicket taker of the innings, and he'll be bowling to Greg Chappell. And Chappell beautifully through the covers. Not even moving, four runs all the way. And he's hit that on the onside, wide of the fieldsman. It won't be four. They've taken their second. Let's see if they'll go for three. I think they'll be comfortable, happy with two. He scored, of course, 247 not out uh, over in New Zealand. But 131 is his best score against England. And he's hit that hard and high. It's coming out towards the boundary. It won't be six, but it's going over the fence or hitting the fence on the second bounce. Red Chapel, 129. Red Path, 76. One for 213. Here's Greg to bowl to Greg Chappell. And clipped beautifully out towards square leg. It's going out towards the boundary. That could be four again. It's going to be very close. And that's into the fence or the children cutting it off. But what a great shot from Greg Chappell. Look at the field and say, where could he hit a four? And in the one place on the field where a four was possible, he scored four runs. Greg Chappell, 136. Red path 76, one for 220. And down it goes towards fine leg, and it's going to be. Is he caught? He's caught, dropped! Well, Greg can't believe it. And Greg Chappell just patted Greg on the back and said, Bad luck. Certainly, there's more than 30,000 here today. And red pass drive through the covers. Good shot. That's going to be four. It's in the air and it could.
could be out. And he is out. Caught by Lloyd at mid-wicket. Greg Chappell caught Lloyd. The bowling of Arnold for 144. Second wicket has fallen at 235. A partnership of 220 runs. A very fine innings by Greg Chappell. Behind square leg, Amos Fielding, two more to Wallace. Bowled him. Playing right over the top, trying to hit the ball through mid wicket. Walters is out, bowled by Underwood for five. And it's three now for 242. Good stroke. It's a long chase for Fletcher. In the meanwhile, as normal with a stroke like that, three runs have been scored. Australia have seven wickets in hand and their lead is 363. Now there's a good stroke. It's a long chase for Willis. He won't pick it up into the boundary and a very good stroke by Edwards. He moves on to seven. He should be scoring runs now. That's better. No one at mid-wicket. It will just get into the fence before Lloyd arrives on the scene. Redpath goes on to 95. Much to the crowd's delight. They appreciated that stroke. And the score three for 261. There it is. Over the top of square leg. It will beat Amos to the fence. Redpath 100, up 103 to him. And Australia three now for 270. Red pass hit that over the top and it's going in the air. He could be caught at mid-off. He's out. What by old. Red pass caught old. Bold Underwood, 105. Edwards not out, 16. Australia, 4 for 280. Well, in fact, it was the declaration and Ian Chappell set England 400 to win. Then those thunderstorms predicted earlier arrived and lost 95 minutes of play. Priceless minutes as far as England are concerned in the saving of this match. The openers then had to go out and survive 55 minutes of Australian pace bowling, with Ian Chappell striving desperately for the breakthrough. Dennis Lilly bowled the first over of the innings, and the batsman is Dennis Amos. Well, there's the start. That is the first authentic bouncer we've seen all day. would be the best ball that uh, Lilia has bowled because it forced the batsman to make a stroke. And that must have been a chance. McCosker uh, hit straight to him. And we better watch this again because that's the end of the over. Definitely a chance and McCosker hurt again. Uh, he's having bad luck in that uh, particular position. We might have a look at that on action replay if we can. Uh, but most definitely a chance. Here it is, it's a full toss, hits it straight to uh, McCosker, and he's hitting the groin quite badly there. And McCosker not having a good time at all on the field. Well, that was one that set up for him. He's cracked that very well through the point area. No fields from the third man, so four more. Lily to Amos. And that hit him. He turned his back, it appeared to hit, hit him somewhere on the shoulder England had 33 on the board without loss at the start of the final day they needed 400 to win but that was a forlorn hope and more to the point was whether or not they could survive five hours and 15 overs of Australian bowling weather permitting that is the pitch was still good 
and provided they showed enough courage and application during the day, I could see no reason why they shouldn't draw the game and go to Adelaide only two down. Amos, as, as is his habit, just in the ball, <coughs> hit him on the back there, just bending down. He wears a probably a pad. And that's a good looking shot. That should be the first four of the morning. That well timed. Smack into the fence it goes. Back past the bowler. Runs here for sure. It's going right down towards the boundary. Edwards is extremely fast and he'll cut this off, I should think, but they've taken two. And will it be four? It's going right down and it's four. That was well timed. Liddy to Amos. And the peel for court behind, he's out. Now that one really surprised him. He pulled away at the last minute and must have just clipped the edge of the bat or his hand. And Amos, of, we can only call that a very vicious ball indeed. Court Marsh, bowl Lily for 37, England two for 70. Lily, his first ball to Edridge. And that was a nasty one. Edridge didn't move there. It wasn't, I should think, it couldn't be termed a bouncer. Oh, no, it wasn't a bouncer. Edridge just ducked straight into it. It was, um, as a matter of fact, I didn't, uh, I was quite surprised when Lily didn't appeal for LBW. It is a possibility that his ribs could be broken, actually, and uh, I think he'd have to get a proportion, uh, precautionary x ray. But he looks uh, uh, hurt quite badly, in fact. So it is a possibility that Itrich might not bat uh, in this innings. Yes. So Fletch is coming in next. Already Fletch is coming through the gates to take over the part. And so the unfortunate captain of England, uh, John Edridge, uh, only facing one ball before he retires. Heard, of course, Edridge, uh, if able, can bat later on in the day. Last day pitch, and Ian Chappell applauding that one from Nui, just showing what life there is. Another great ball from Lily. That was a magnificent ball. There are as many men as possible in catching positions. Two slips in a gully, and the short leg, short forward square leg, and a leg slip. Bad shot, caught by Ian Chappell at first slip from the bowling of Walker. Cowdery playing a pretty tentative stroke outside the off stump. It's quite a, it's quite a strong wind, probably about 10 knots, aiding Thompson. And there's a very good stroke by Fletcher, that's four runs. Good stroke, that will be four runs. It's a long chase for Ross Edwards. He's got no hope of picking that one up. More runs, this will be another four. This time Ross Edwards isn't bothering to chase it with any speed at all, just jogging away to the fence there. Over the top of slips for four. Amos and Lloyd batting very well early, but it's tight now as the English batsmen try to consolidate. Well, he's not out caught, but he's been hit on the hand from that nasty rising delivery. Out. Caught by Redpath in the gully. Fletcher out for 11. Well, Lee back at his mark now, ready to go again. And he'll be bowling to Knott. And runs here. It's going down towards the boundary. Ian Chappell's after it. Now, that gives you some idea of Lily's speed. That's going into the fence for four. It was chopped down into the ground which should take the pace off the ball, went over the high over the head of the slip fieldsman, and yet still made four.
Well, he's cracked that one. Great shot from Greg. And there's that slash of Greg's. That's four going flying out to the boundary. And he could be, that may have been off the bat. We'll find out here what will happen. The umpire must signal. They've taken one coming back for two. Now watch here, if it's Byers, of course, there was no contact, but um, it was off the bat. Onside field, we have uh, three men you can see there, the orthodox onside positions, and also a deep square leg on the boundary, as well as a short leg. And is that a chance? He could be out. He's out. Caught by Red Park. He's hit that over the head of the mid-off. That's a great shot from Greg again. And that's uh, six fours to Greg. Well, that'll be four over the top of cover. We're seeing some most unusual strokes from this man, but my goodness, he can bat. That's his 50. Greg, 51. Mallet bowls to Titmus. This could be out. Straight up in the air. Thompson under it. <laughs> Titmus is out. Caught Thompson. Bowled Mallet for four runs. Was not a particularly well judged shot. Titmus, I think, fully expecting the ball to turn. And the incoming batsman is Edrich. Edrich coming back after injury. It's been a tight keen day's cricket with Australia trying to get through the remaining English batsmen. Greg, who's made 54 runs in slashing fashion, uh, slashing not being used in a perhaps the literal uh, expression in that uh, he's been playing some magnificent strokes at a time when he... Oh, he could be out here, though. He is out. Out stumped by Marsh, going down the wicket to Mallet. And as you saw, getting two or three yards down the pitch, missing, and a very fine piece of stumping by Marsh. Another good stroke, there's no one behind point. Chase for Mallet this time, he won't beat it to the fence. Well played by Edrich. That could be out, caught and bowled. And Edwards has pulled that on the onside. It's going out towards the boundary. And it might be four. It looks like it is. That's Jenna, the talk man who had to chase that. And that's it, is it? No. Greg Chappell playing up to the crowd. England bowled. That's the vital breakthrough. Willis bowled by Lilly for 12. Oh, in the air, pass slip. A possible chance. It would have been a great catch, but it's four runs. Arnold 14 and nine for 228. And that is the end of the test match. Arnold caught McCosker. No, caught by Greg Chappell from the bowling of Mallet for 14. And England are all out for 228. Mallet finishing with the fine figures of 4 for 21. That is not only the end of the test.